that during these days jhansi is also the epicenter of the pandemic and he has been given lot many responsibilities to minimize the spread of the covid 19 in jhansi i welcome him the moment he will be free he will join us definitely i welcome professor neelam srivastava head of department electronics engineering iit lucknow i welcome archana mishra who is from the uh, sports and had been the coach and selector of the cricket women's cricket team and working with indian railways at the moment i welcome mrs somya benival director benovo management i also welcome sukanya ray from tata institute of social sciences at legal counsel advocate aisha saeed mrs farhana haq from the university of brunei dr iman el alam from the egypt and coordinator of this webinar dr sanaj ayu and the state project administrator the tech group dr anil kumar and our uh, uh, dr biradar from pda college of engineering so as you all are aware that the mission shakti was launched by up chief minister yogi adityanath ji on one incident that took place in hatras on 17th of the october this mission was launched by up chief minister it is his dream mission to protect this security and safety for the women to empower them so for that purpose we have organized a number of the webinars on the different issues related to the women security women uh, safety their empowerment their self reliant attitude and in this final webinar we have invited experts from the different sector from legal sector from psychologist from uh, administrator from uh, academics and uh, from the medical sector also so that the final outcome can be discussed by the different uh, uh, experts today in this webinar so i welcome all the experts and the dignitaries who have joined this platform and the participants for this webinar i am confident that the deliberations from the different experts will be benefit will be fruitful for giving safety and security to the women and will go a long way to keep the mission shakti uh, uh, ahead with their expert advice with these words i wish success for this webinar thank you thank you very much yeah thank you so much sir i wholeheartedly thank you for your inspiring and encouraging words sir we wish to express our gratitude to you sir for being with us on this event your presence and motivation always boost our morale thank you very much sir as director sir has already mentioned honorable chief minister uttar pradesh shri yogi adityanath launched the mission shakti program on october 17 2020 to ensure safety uh, respectability and empowerment suraksha atmasamman swavalamban of women in the state the mission was launched on the first day of navratri and would have to be implemented for 6 months till the vasant navratri april 2021 so today we are celebrating the closing ceremony of national webinar series on mission shakti 2020 to join hands in this mission bit jhansi and spiu uttar pradesh have taken the initiative to empower the women of nation and for that planned various topics aspects as director sir has also mentioned we have covered the topics on gender sensitization women empowerment women's mental health cyber security and role of social media women's nutrition for better health laws and rights for women jhansi rani a symbol of an empowered woman during this pandemic let's move ahead with the quote fitness and happiness is fundamental need not a luxury yes a strong empowering personality who believes in yoga and meditation for better health we are blessed to have a distinguished personality among us in this webinar dr anil kumar state project administrator state project implementation unit uttar pradesh sir will deliver the opening remark over to you sir 
थैंक यू वेरी मच मैडम इट इज इंडीड माई ग्रेट प्लेजर दैट टूडे वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग द क्लोजिंग सेरेमनी ऑफ a series of programs being conducted as part of the tech up initiative and more particularly focusing on mission shakti it's not audible the brain child of honorable chief minister of uttar pradesh yogi adityanath a a director sir very correctly told a incident had at hathras came as a spark in uttar pradesh and yogi adityanath had taken a vow to ensure women empowerment in the state it is not the only by way of talking it is by way of actions also and a series of programs both on education level as well as awareness and capacity building levels were being conducted by all the department institutions organizations the way in which they can do we in uttar pradesh as a part of the tech 3 initiative there is a technical education quality improvement program facebook aap shuru kiya hai gender sensitization tension nahi hai bhai sahab udhari ka paisa mangna hai equity to bhej dijiye remind one of the major mandate of tech 3 nahi yahi nahi and women empowerment and security in a world to ensure and education empowerment in the state is to be ensured and that is why under equity and under gender sensitization we also consider it as a fit program to do it so that it can become not only aware the students and teachers it will create an enabling mechanism i will take few minutes time to share with you let me go back to the ancient part of the country in ancient india we are told that how goddesses had separate temples for them and were allowed to choose partners even women were allowed to choose partners they are, they are performing sacrifices with their husbands together we are aware about one very very enlightened lady of the vedic period gargi who, who was in, who was engaging herself in a philosophical discourse with king yagavalke this gives as an indisputable example of how women had access to education and how powerful and empowered women during the vedic period their status is just primarily on the basis of their relationship to a man and their familial roles while the vedic period say still dispute but say for example since 2000 bc to 5000 is seen specifically a golden age for the women there are also sweeping generalizations regarding the celebrated position of women during all of ancient indian period even the latter period also we we are we are known about article of achar and we are also know, knowing about a very famous genetic a bidusi bharati and sakra chat who could who can defeat everybody in such start all through the country but he was defeated by bharati in mithila region of bihar when she challenged him that first you defeat me then you have to go for a basic discourses and engagement that is called sastrat at that point of time with her husband pandit pandit mandal misra so that was the rich tradition what india had but what happened that during the latter period suddenly the deterioration started a part of the sociology we also know that sak hun mongols all came from various part of the world and they could not win the country they were assimilated and they were the part and parcel of this great cultural heritage of the country and they were assimilated and given various status in the country but during the period gradually <coughs> women's status started deteriorating and it went to the nadir during the peak period of the medieval peak medieval period even during 
during british period also though few few uh, uh, freedom fighters could take, take a great lead creating awareness about the role of women what is required to be played to fight with the men folk against the british but we can count their number lakshmi sagal eh uh, uh, or or few only few but the moment india got freedom though legally from day one we must give credit and kudos to dr b r ambedkar who from day one make every citizen of india equal not only in terms of status in terms of status in terms of opportunity and in terms of the practices what they want to follow but still still since independence till date we have not achieved much though uh, during this entire period much water has flowed and women status has definitely changed and improved in the country but still much more to be done and this webinar i must express my thanks to the bit jhansi uh, the director of bit jhansi professor vk tyagi ji and more particularly uh, sanaj ayub ji the dean research who has taken a keen lead to carry forward this mission shakti series and this is the sixth and the last program under the series on this occasion a large number of our guests not only from india from outside the country are also available i will not take much time and i will wish all the best success with your webinar reiterating and repeating the three terms what yogi adityanath did told what sanad has repeated the same swachha atmasamman and swalamman these three words motto visions should be should be for any activity for women empowerment in the country in the society again i wish all the success with this webinar thank you very much sir thank you very much madam thank you very much sir for your cooperation and support during this pandemic we have conducted many webinars of national and international reputed jointly with spiu uttar pradesh under your guidance you have influenced us in such a positive way words cannot express our appreciation thank you so much sir uh, uh, sir director sir with your permission i just take this privilege to change the sequence because uh, farhana uh, uh, at bruni uh, it's running to uh, two hours late from indian time so she has to go for uh, you know for fasting breaking the fast iftar so i would i would like to conduct her session first Uh, sure, sure. with your permission yeah sure, sure. man can never be a woman's equal in the spirit of selfless service with which nature has endowed her mahatma gandhi said this let's see what she says a young girl who has not missed a single webinar on this mission doing research on gender development comparative study between Bu bruneian and bangladeshi women miss farana haq from university of bruni darussalam on gender sensitization farana over to you uh thank you everyone am i audible yes yes farana okay uh, so good afternoon everyone uh, i am very glad and honored to be part of this conference that has been uh, organized by uh, bundelkhand institute of engineering and technology jhansi and it's uh, jointly uh, they are organized national webinar series on mission shakti 2020 it's the sixth and closing uh, webinar and i am very much uh happy and honored that i got invitation to deliver my speech uh, special thanks to uh, ma'am dr shahnaz uh, so uh, without any long introduction i would like to share my screen with the permission of you yes yes please you can share yeah. you are co host so you can share madam so yeah so first of all uh, i would like to talk about uh, as the topic of this webinar is about women empowerment and my work is also about women empowerment and i am doing research on 
comparative study between Bruneian and Bangladeshi women, uh, how they are surviving under the male-dominated society. So this is the main thing uh, that women should be empowered and they should have their own space and place and rights in, uh, at home, in society and all over the world. So uh, that's the thing. So first of all, I would like to talk about what is the meaning of empowerment? How does it work and what does it call by legal empowerment? So uh, empowerment uh, uh, basically is the degree of autonomy and self-determination in people and communities. This actually enables them to represent their interest in a responsible and self-determined way, acting on their own uh, authority. Uh, they have to be their own power uh, to run their work. So in simple sentence or simple way, I can say that Empowerment is something which is the authority or power given to someone to do something. So if we uh, 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 want to uh, implement on this empowerment for women, so it's like that uh, we should give power to women to do something freely and uh, to you know, uh, make themselves uh, independent besides men. So how does it work? The empowerment approach works to develop awareness uh, on several levels. Individuals must build their power by cultivating the belief that they can change their circumstances. This requires addressing some of the indirect power blocks that interfering with their self-actualization. So if uh, any kind of uh, uh, thing that, uh, you know, obstruct, you know, give, uh, making the obstacle on the way of women's success. So we should, uh, we should uh, amend this thing and make sure that women are uh, self-confident uh, and they can do anything like, as I said, besides men. So why we call it as a legal empowerment? So legal empowerment is about strengthening the capacity of all people to exercise their rights, either as individuals or as members of a community. It about grassroots uh, justice, about ensuring that law is not confined to books or courtroom, but rather is available and meaningful to the ordinary people. So, uh, yeah, uh, as I told about the meaning of empowerment and uh, the women empowerment is, uh, uh, again, I will tell the ability of women to exercise full control over one's action. This is the uh, uh, definition, simple definition of women empowerment I can talk about. So... Uh, according to uh, uh, World Bank and United Nations, they got some uh, definition about uh, empowerment. So here is the definition according to World Bank. They said that empowerment is the process of increasing the capacity of individuals or groups to make choices and to transform those choices into desired actions and outcomes. And uh, besides the I can again say that what United Nations, they, they, they categorized women empowerment uh, within five components, which are women's sense of self-worth, the right to have and determine choices, uh, their right to have access to opportunity uh, and uh, power uh, within and outside of home, their capability to influence and uh, direction of social change to create more just uh, social and economic order nationally and internationally. So how does it work, uh, this empowerment work and how it benefits, uh, how is the coaching? So uh, empowerment is uh, simply, you can say through, uh, we can achieve it through synchronized efforts that 
work with not on people but their relationships and uh, and the impinging social and political environment this simultaneous and coordinated efforts create a spiral of influences that initiate sustain and amplify empowered functioning so if we can ensure these things uh, for women so women can also empower themselves uh, by ensuring these things so we should work together and synchronize these efforts uh, and obviously with the help of men in a society at home and then we can achieve so as i told uh, earlier what does it call by legal empowerment and these are the thing so i will uh, go to the concept of legal empowerment <laughs> uh so the concept of uh, legal empowerment Parana, is something also, like prana take care of time also yes we yes have, yeah yes, also. Yeah. yeah yeah so we have to identify their voice rights and access uh so uh, uh women empowerment as we told that it's uh, a ch- challenge gender based discrimination against women so in all the institution and structures uh, of society we have to ensure this so these are the values of an empowered woman which is the subject of my uh subject topic of today's speech that importance uh, of empowered women so improves in personal knowledge self defining power personal power authenticity creativity physical strength equality mutually in relationships economic identification women identification freedom for from oppression having political power in society so in a brief way i can tell that what is the improves in personal knowledge so women should be empowered and learned from their own they should uh, um, enhance their personal knowledge through uh, say they should uh, set their goals uh, self through own creative work they should do like to uh, read books uh, watching uh, uh, attending seminars conferences and uh, reading magazines and talk with uh, other people and doing something to en- enhance their knowledge to get together with other people self defining is something like they sh- uh, they should know about their own view as a complete human being uh, they should not uh, uh, be a helpmate to man or mother housewife or service holder or uh, for uh, other needs they should be uh, sh- they should uh, set their own goal for their own self a self uh, a uh, healthy self concept uh, should be like this self concept influence reinforce self esteem uh, resilience these things should be included uh, in women so personal power is something like that authenticity authenticity is also something like that you have to ignore criticism if you are do, doing something you have to enjoy this uh, and show the capabilities to everyone creativity is also like that you have to balance of power conflict uh, you have to do the competition uh, success in new ways and uh, make choice of your decision based on your knowledge and then you can achieve your personal freedom then physical strength and equality it's also the same thing uh, women should be uh, very strength and uh, very sound health from mind and uh, stamina they should be fearlessness uh, are needful for women and equality like they should be uh, equal human being right, uh, like men mutuality in relationship and economic independence these are also the main thing because women should be uh, financially independent like men so they should understand about how to make money and how to make and arrange the financial thing uh yeah so having political power in society also is very important so women can also show their power in politics so these are the thing 
uh, and the procedures of uh, empowering women should be like something like changes in women mobility and social interaction in labor pattern access to and control over resources and decision making uh, and these are the empowerment program i just uh, i will skip and the main thing is uh, we have the women's day to celebrate our women's potentiality so this is the thing that we contribute to all women uh, on 8th march so they can celebrate their achievements raise awareness about women's equality and uh, many things they can do for themselves to show the world so at last i would like to talk about uh, one sentence uh, that hillary clinton she said that women rights are women's rights and women's rights are human rights once and for all so that's all from, from my side thank you yeah thank you so much i want every girl to know that her voice can change the world thank you very much farana for your deliberation we wish all thank the success you, for your future thank you, endeavor Lord. yeah thank you so much for spending your valuable time during ramzan with us let's move ahead and thanks to all yeah thank you you have to remember rights don't come in groups we shouldn't have gay rights rights come us as individuals and we wouldn't have this major debate going on it would be behavior that would count not what person belongs to what group let's see what she says our expert today advocate aisha sayed legal counsel with corporate organization mumbai dear take this platform and enlighten our dagas gathering on laws and rights for women aisha over oh, to good you af- good afternoon everybody Thank you so much. I'm audible. Yes, yes, please. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody, for giving me this opportunity. I'm not going to take too much of time of everybody. I'm just going to summarize what are the rights and what are the laws available in India today for a woman to become an empowered woman. Now, women's rights are the rights and entitlement claimed for women and girls worldwide. Everybody knows this. These rights are institutionalized or supported by law. local customs and behavior now issues commonly associated with notions of women's rights include the right to body integrity and autonomy to be free from sexual harassment and sexual violence to vote to hold public office to enter into legal contract to have equal rights in family law to work to equal pay and fair pay of course to have reproductive rights to own property and to education to name few when the rights are violated there is a remedy and that remedy is through law to safeguard these rights there are laws in our legal system to name a few i'll just mention few which are very important which every women should know the first one to start with is the prohibition of child marriage act now in olden days the girl child was considered as a liability and she was married off in a very tender age so when this particular act has come into place this particular practice the practice of a girl getting married at a very tender age has been abolished this is a very good thing which has happened in our society secondly i will i would want to tell you about one more important act which is dowry prohibition act dowry system is very old in our country but due to this the women were subjected to cruelty by the husband and his relatives to the extent of setting her to a setting her on fire alive to stop such violence against women this particular act is implemented and believe me this act has taken so much of um, so much this act has been so much uh, important the dowry system has actually reduced with education the women have progressed in every walk of life but i must say along with that the crime rate has also gone up against them it is for this reason there have been laws which are enforced today like the protection of women from domestic violence sexual harassment of women at workplace indecent representation of women equal remuneration wherein there is a women and a man working in the same position they should be giving equal wages the maternity benefit act the medical termination of pregnancy act to name few now given the number of crimes that are committed against women 
it is pertinent that women are aware of these laws that are in place to protect them remember knowledge is power as a parent a wife a daughter an employee and not to forget as a women these are rights set in place to protect you and it is important that you are aware about this now to conclude my brief information on laws and rights for women i would like to say that even our indian constitution guarantees several rights such as the right to equality in article 14 and right to life and personal liberty under article 21 to all of its citizens irrespective of gender so this was the brief introduction which i wanted to give about the law and uh, the rights of women which uh, is very important that every women every girl should know and uh, thank you so much uh, dr shainaz ayub and the others uh, the other um, uh, members for giving me this particular opportunity to present few points on this i just would want to conclude my presentation here thank you so much thank you aisha feminism has never been about getting a job for one woman it's about making life more fair for women everywhere it's not about a piece of the existing pie there are too many of us for that it's about baking a new pie you believe this aisha thank you aisha for accepting our invitation and sparing your valuable words and time my pleasure thank you so much yeah thank you let's move ahead my hijab is my dignity my respect my honor and i will never ever trade it for this temporary world here hijab means naqab my hijab is my dignity my respect and my honor and i will never ever trade it for this temporary world yes it's a determination a profound scientist dr aman a alam professor faculty of science al azhar university egypt on women empowerment dr aman over to you hello my dear sister yeah you are audible thank you very much i am very happy to be with you can i deliver my lecture now yes yes please thank you very much okay i am ready thanks for this uh, great introduction uh, before saying anything i want to introduce myself uh, i am dr imana lam from faculty of science al azhar university egypt uh, my lecture will be about uh, two complementary parts uh, the first of them is related to how to simplify biotechnological sciences why i chose this uh, topic because nothing will be done without uh, good learning excellent learning and excellent teaching uh, nothing will be done without uh, simplification of science so we must create a leaders for the, uh, the future uh, by inquiry based science education Uh, which uh, is uh, one of uh, tools in uh, education uh, because uh, in this uh, way we can uh, make students uh, the core of uh, the education process not as a part not only part but uh, the teacher will be facilitator now allow me please to share my screen and yes, the yes. next part will be about how to simplify scientific writing i hope uh, i'll be have enough time to show this inshallah i am 10 15 minutes madam 10 15 10 to 15 minutes thank you thank you thank you very much i am sharing okay bismillah Uh, screen is uh, visible uh, yes madam inquiry based teaching and learning thank you very much and we have our theme is on women empowerment madam okay thank you um because uh, i am in uh, female branch uh, in botany department faculty of science al azhar university so i need to highlight education and the teaching as a right for women 
uh, I need to show uh, my personal experience in this regard uh, in uh, making uh, teaching biotechnological sciences uh, is very easy to my students. I attracted other students uh, uh, from different branches, but mainly uh, I am focusing on my students in my classroom, in my department and in my faculty of science. Uh, so I try for me to show my personal experience. Yes, madam, please continue. Okay. I will share with you my personal experience in this regard. This is some of my books related to the area of uh, simplification of sciences and education of students. Uh, this book is containing achievements of the Faculty of Science at other University. I prepared this book. This book is containing uh, training programs and uh, all scientific events in uh, the, uh, the Faculty of Science at other University during the two years. Uh, this second, uh, this is my second book related to this area: uh, Active Learning and Education of Sciences through Inquiry-Based Learning and Education of Sciences. Uh, first part is about biotechnological science. Another book. Plant Biotechnologies and the Pharmaceutical Product. Plant Biotechnology and the Natural Pesticides. Uh, this book is related to bioinformatics. This book is prepared by my students. He is, he is in the fourth level of uh, uh, agricultural university, al other agriculture, al other university. He is a student of biotechnology. His book is in Arabic about bioinformatics. I encouraged him to prepare this book. This book is related to popularization of science, case study, plants mentioned in the Quran. This book is about diet and innovation. This book is prepared for students to inform them about the suitable diet, which is related to uh, the, uh, the peace and uh, the health of their mind. This book is related to alphabets of a scientific paper uh, for uh, scientific writing, how to simplify scientific writing. This is the exercise book of this book. How to simplify scientific writing also is another book. This book is related to participation uh, of students in uh, scientific meetings internationally and the preparation of uh, international scientific paper. This book is about diet and innovation. This book is prepared for students to inform them about This book is related to simplification of science. This book is related to sexual, sexual reproduction in plants, part two. This book, part two. This book is about green bio nanotechnology and the production of phytochemicals with antibacterial activity activities against the cost of agent of typhoon. This book is related to simplification of science. Phytochemical and larvicidal activity of some extracts of Egyptian of some Egyptian plants against the positive agent of filaria uh, uh, larva. Uh, this larvae is co are collected from uh, Zaria in Niger. Natural phytochemical products uh, for our life. Plants between the Holy Quran and modern sciences. Pesticidal activities of some natural phytochemical products. This book is about green bio nanotechnology and the production of phytochemicals with antibacterial activity activities against the cost of agent of typhoon. This book is related to some of our scientific meeting. Modern sciences, pesticidal activities of some natural phytochemical products. This book is really. Learning 
by love is uh, an um, excellent message you must give it to uh, your student you must learn by love you mu must uh, learn by fun by, uh, by enjoyment uh, learning is not a sadness process learning is not equal said uh, education is not equal that you must be uh, in a tedious work and no time for anything no no you can learn everything by fun by enjoyment by simplification of science you must learn yourself before learning your student you must educate yourself you must improve yourself as a teacher you must learn yourself that your uh, sorry your message is how to draw the smile uh, above uh, the face of your student your student must uh, must smile uh, it is not darkness it is light uh, science is uh, distribution of light not distribution of darkness not distribution of sadness <laughs> places I did uh, this meet science education workshop uh, it is done in uh, Malaysia by UNESCO um, I think it is about uh, two years ago and finally thank you very much uh, I finished my lecture I finished uh, my message but I think still the discussion is opening and you are welcome to contact me at my email and thank you very much and I am still very happy to be with you. Thank you very much for allowing me to be with uh, this great scientist. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Behind every successful woman is a tribe of other successful women Hello, who have her back. Hello, ma'am. My dear sister, uh, can I complete or uh, time is over? Hello? Ma'am, I thought she that was supposed over. to talk about something hijab, but uh, she told us about all the her books. We, we talk about the olive oil. Olive oil is good, particularly in, uh, it, it contains monounsaturated fatty acids and certain essential fatty acids, which are not synthesized in the human body. So, oils and fats also fulfill your requirement of the essential fatty acids which uh, keeps the hormonal balance uh, in your body also. And they also fight with certain diseases in the body. So you have to meet out the requirement of these essential fatty acids from the outside source of the oils and fats. So um, my important uh, point which I wanted to focus today from the nutritional point of view that for the different segment of the people, you need energy in, in the different form. And the requirement of the energy for the different segment of the people is altogether different. For athletes, you need energy for about 3,000 calories per day. Working women require different calories. Housewives require different calories. So we have to take these uh, energy requirements from the different source of the food items like proteins, carbohydrates, oils and fats, vitamins, other phytosterols, etc. in a uh, uh, balanced manner. So balanced diet is required, particularly in today's uh, time of the pandemic. It is said that those who are having strong immunity will survive. Because, and this is basically comes from your food habits. What food you have to intake? What, what is the culture? What fatty acids you have to consume? What fats and oils you have to consume? What proteins you have to take? What proteins you have not to take? So this is the uh, point of a great uh, deliberation. At certain other point of the time, uh, I will discuss uh, all other intricacies of these. But at this point of time, I would like to say to you that you have to keep yourself physically fit, you have to keep yourself mentally fit and that can be done by using proper diet, balanced diet, meditation, yoga, etc. Only then you can develop 
strong immunity which is all doctors advocating at the moment that you have to make your immunity strong you have to make your defense system of the body strong to fight with the pandemic at the moment with these words uh, if is, is there any query from the audience uh, it is it is welcome from my side yes sir uh, if the if there are no queries can we take it at the end sir uh, yes sir uh, yes madam yes uh, sir actually i uh, 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 didn't have Archana Madam's number, Archana Mishra Madam's number. Can you let me know if she has joined or not? Because I am not getting her in list. Archana okay, okay. Sports Madam, yeah. Meantime, we'll continue with other session. Okay, okay. Yeah. Sir, I wholeheartedly thank you for your inspiring and encouraging words, sir. If the world had more people. people like you it would have been better place you do make a difference sir thank you so much sir we wish to express our gratitude to you sir for being with us on this event thank you so much there is no force more powerful than a woman determined to rise let me take this platform to come out from hosting and deliberate on the topic close to my heart research and development department of science and technology has launched a scheme kiran Kiran stands for knowledge involvement in research advancement through nurturing. Let me make it clear in audience that it is a session from my side on opportunities for women who are ha having break in their career. So I am out of now hosting and I am deliberating on the topic. Women scientists, women are important section of the workforce, more particularly in the science and technology domain. However, a large number of well-qualified women get left out of the science and technology activities due to various circumstances, which are usually typical to the gender. The challenges faced by them are several, but most often the break in career arises out of the motherhood and family responsibilities. To address such issues, Department of Science and Technology (DST) launched. Women Scientist Scheme (WOS) during 2002. This initiative primarily aimed at providing opportunities to women scientists and technologists between the age group of 27 to 57 years who had a break in their career but desired to return to mainstream. Though through this endeavor of the department. concerted efforts have been made to give women a strong foothold into the scientific profession help them re-enter into the mainstream and provide a launch pad for further forays into the field of science and technology re-entry into the profession now what let's see what are these categories of fellowships which dst kiran is providing you You simply have to Google DST Kiran, and you will find three schemes under it. Woman Scientist Scheme A, that is W O S A, which is in research in basic and applied science. Woman Scientist Scheme B, that is W O S B, it is for science and technology interventions for societal benefit. third one is women scientist scheme c w o s c that is for internship in intellectual property rights for the self employment and what is the elig eligibility to apply this fellowship first you should not be a regular employee that means the women who are who are uh, facing through break in their career they only can apply for this scheme dst kiran the scheme is meant to encourage women in science and uh, technology domain qualifications required are minimum post graduate degree equivalent to msc in basic or applied sciences or btech or mbbs or other equivalent professional qualifications or mphil mtech m pharma masters in vocational sciences or equivalent qualifications and highest degree phd in basic or applied sciences 
and age about the age group i had already told but still i am repeating it the minimum age which uh, you can apply is for wos gari is 27 years minimum and maximum is 57 years and age relaxation of 5 years would be given to candidate belonging to sc st obc and physically challenged category this scheme will provide a research grant for a well defined project proposal under wos a and wos b for a period of maximum 3 years so the women who are having break in their career can be engaged for 3 years if they apply to this particular schemes this grant will cover the fellowship of the applicant and cost of small equipment contingencies travel consumables etc institutional overhead charges will be extra i will not go into the detail of the application process because today's our theme is on women empowerment and this topic is just to uh, just to help the women who are having break in their career so that they can start this applying to this scheme uh, since today onwards now in this particular schemes in wosa and wos b schemes if the candidate is having qualification phd in basic or applied sciences or md in medicine then the amount of fellowship which he or she uh, which she will get is rupees 55000 per month plus extra hra as applicable to that particular area and if the candidate is mphil mtech m pharma m masters in vocational sciences or equivalent degree she will get rupees 40000 per month plus hra as applicable and if the candidate is msc in basic or applied sciences or mbbs or btech or equivalent degree then she will get rupees 31000 per month with hra extra so these are the schemes which are very helpful and it these are not available for re- regular employee these are available only for the women who are having break in their career and in a uh, scheme c that is wos scheme c which is for your internship uh, 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 in ipr that is intellectual property right after this one year of course one can apply for jobs at ipr sectors as a legal advisor in patent filing etc so if the candidate is phd or md rupees 35000 per month if mphil mtech m pharma rupees 30000 per month and if msc in basic and applied sciences or B take or mbbs then rupees 25000 per month now for a scheme uh, wsa provides platform to women scientists and technologist for pursuing research in basic or applied sciences in frontier areas of science and engineering the scheme plays uh, pivotal role in gender mainstreaming as it not only prevents brain drain from science and technology system but also train and retrain women in the system the scheme initially offers opportunity to work as bench level scientist and ultimately open new avenues for permanent position in science and technology the support available is in five disciplines under wsa namely physical and mathematical sciences chemical sciences life sciences earth and atmospheric sciences and engineering and technology and the application is open throughout the year you can visit it on the website and can apply online scientist uh, so uh, women scientist can be that is wsb scheme focuses on projects related to science and technology interventions for societal benefit such project proposal should address a well identified societal challenge and deliver possible solutions by way of development of viable technology technique and or lab to land uh, lab to land technology transfer its application and scaling up women scientists who wish to apply under this scheme are required to develop their own project proposals for scientific and technological solutions and this proposal must clearly bring out the societal benefit to be accrued through well conceived plan for development of technology technique and or adaptation customization the candidate should have adequate science and technology skills and be adept at techniques to deliver the proposed outcomes now 
in so WOS KC scheme is being implemented by the Patent Facilitating Center of Technology Information Forecasting and Assessment Council. The scheme aims to train women having qualifications in science and engineering, medicine, and allied areas in the field of intellectual property rights and their management for a period of one year in order to develop a pool of women scientists geared to creating, protecting and managing intellectual property in India. Hands on training on different aspects of IPR had, uh, have been given in this particular scheme during one year of time. And eligibility is minimum age is 27 years and maximum is 45 years. Uh, as uh, on 1st January uh, of that particular time, if she has some free time, what would she like to do? That sense of agency is critical for mental health because it gives us the essence of our human lives, which is will. We all need our willpower and our, and our power of choice, our freedom of choice to lead happier lives. But when we look at a woman who's, who has had a plethora of you know, roles in the family and outside as well, this loss of willpower, the loss of the freedom to choose what she wants to do with her time, her resources, sometimes leads to a lot of bottled up feelings of helplessness, um, irritability, um, anger, anxiety and depression as well. Apart from that, uh, we also need to understand that there are other risk groups that women might be belonging to. For example, pregnant women. For example, women who are in the postnatal condition right now. Or women who are, um, you know, um, probably having children who are, um, you know, uh, infants or maybe school going age. So there's a lot of stress associated with rearing children up. So women who are directly or indirectly uh, related to child care falls within the purview of these uh, risk groups, not only because of the plethora of roles that I said, but also because of the fact that um, that these, um, you know, these are times where women are typically prone to several mental health issues, including postpartum depression, postpartum psychosis. These are the times in a woman's life when she's vulnerable for plenty of psychiatric disorders as well. And we all know that currently uh, medical care, um, you know, our, our frontline workers are exhausted completely managing the COVID toll. And therefore, um, the the ability for medical um, health line, I mean, frontline health line workers or even psychiatrists, mental health professionals to reach out to all these women uh, who are at risk probably becomes limited. So there, that ensues a lot of risk for women who are in these age groups and in these developmental stages. Uh, hence, it's important that as a society, we come together and re recognize that these socially transacted roles, these stereotypical roles that women have been given since ages um, need to be questioned now. We are facing a pandemic which probably none of us have faced or nor should have to face again in our lifetimes. But probably this is the time that we need to question these gender stereotypes that have been constructed through our civilization, uh, through all these years of human civilization. And perhaps this is the time that we break these stereotypes and come forward to, uh, to decrease this multiplicity of roles that women have and come forward to share the workload. The second issue that we all uh, are probably experiencing is this in increase in caregiving and a sense of burnout, a sense of extreme fatigue, a sense of, and this time especially what I am also noticing all around in the second wave, is this sense of that the pandemic has really hit closer home this time. We all know some people around us, probably every second or third person who has been impacted by the pandemic. The pandemic has literally hit home closer this time and that is just increasing the amount of fatigue, the amount of helplessness and a little bit of hopelessness as well. And that is not any less for the women group, um, even though they are intricately involved in caregiving. The caregiving and the caregiving burden and the burnout is enormous for everyone around. Shouldn't be any less for women, should it? So we all need to acknowledge this. We all need to come forward to uh, realize that no one group is more or less impacted, but the women at home perhaps also need the care, the acknowledgement, that of the of the efforts that you put in that they put in day in and day out. The last point that I want to um, iterate is the uh, the risk that has been talked about right from the beginning of the pandemic. The issue of gender based violence, which has increased since the time that um, the pandemic has hit um, the country, and uh, there were lockdown imposed, and with lockdown imposed. Um, 
it actually ensured that a number of women who were going through gender based violence which could mean domestic violence which could mean intimate partner violence um were having to stay cramped up with the same people who were meting them out with this gender based violence and um, as we all know that gender based violence leaves the impact um for a long time there is a long term traumatic impact that um that stays with the woman and not only the woman it also gets gets passed on to her children um even though inadvertently because it's too much for one person to bear the impact of such an amount of trauma so those are some of the important themes uh, on women's mental health particularly in the time of the pandemic and um like i said that although this is not to say that um that that this is um this is something that we should take home saying that only women are impacted uh, every one's impacted but these are some of the risks particularly in the women's group that um, needs to be brought um, attention to i would like to just end my lecture there and i hope that we are taking um, forward some of the important points and recognize the women in our lives and acknowledging their roles that they have been playing day in and day out since the beginning of the pandemic and uh, once again just want to reiterate i wish everyone safety strength and hope during these tough times thank you thank you so much madam caring for your body mind and spirit is your greatest and grandest responsibility it's about listening to the needs of your soul and then honoring them thank you very much madam for your valuable time and guidance thank you from bottom of my heart that you had accepted my invitation at 11th hour and spare your valuable time thank you so much madam uh, director sir director sir with your permission can we invite the first lady of the institute if she can share, share some um, enlighten us on some uh, points of the webinar theme dr rashmi tagi madam are you there still on board can i request you may i take this privilege to call you on uh, this platform Professor Rashmi Tagi, yeah, madam. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Rashnaz, I am very much there, and uh, I feel that uh, I am not a competent person to say anything with the jury of such a learned members. So rather, uh, after but listening, but you are empowered, human, madam. <laughs> no, it's a, it's, it's a grace of God Perfect. or. or maybe a little hard work what i did but frank every opportunity whatever i am today it is all because of my family my husband my kids so women are like a very beautiful flower they must be kept in a very you know nurtured manner they have to take on all due cares to so, shanaz mujhe aisa lagta hai ki such kind of programs are fantastic if the people are listening with the soul and heart definitely for a hour and two or three it's there a aura is there in the mind ki hame kuch karna hai we have to do something we have to take care of the girl but really agar hum ghar se shuru kare you know the house is the first school the house is the first place the mother is the first teacher a father is the first mentor so we can make a big change so with these few words i just pray to the god that you people start doing or you keep continuing the fantastic work and very soon the world is going to become a very very safe and beautiful place to all the girls and this pandemic is very soon going to be over and we all are going to meet uh, in a way as we used to so thank you so much for this uh, lovely interaction thank you so much yeah thank you madam muskurat ka i said मुस्कुराकर दर्द भुलाकर रिश्तों में बंद थी दुनिया सारी हर पक को रोशन करने वाली वो शक्ति है एक नारी yes, और नहीं किसी गुलाब की वो खुद बागवान है इस कायनात की थैंक यू सो मच मैडम आपने याद दिलाया तो मुझे भी याद आ गया थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर प्रोफेसर राघवन सर इज ऑल्सो देर ऑन बोर्ड सो मे आई रिक्वेस्ट प्रोफेसर राघवन सर प्रोफेसर राघवन सर ओके थैंक यू thank you uh, madam uh, senior most professor in the field of microwave engineering and always uh, uh, towards empowering the women i request you sir please uh, to bless us with your few words and uh, we are so happy that you have joined this particular session in spite of your busy schedule thank you so much sir please sir 
sincere thanks to the inspiring director who gave me a sudden pleasure of uh, participating along with the uh, big giants uh, i just want to say some two three things only uh, the previous speakers two sentences uh, previous uh, madam tyagi she told the pandemic is going to get uh, over that sentence alone will make india everyone will come out of the pandemic circumstances because the moment you open the tv that news only comes the moment uh, our madam tyagi told um, pandemic is going to get over so that kind of sentences will definitely give lot of strength to uh, at, at least this time the second one the previous speaker told about the uh, will power where there's a will there's a way so now i i would like to simply list out a few inspiring women when we keep talking about the empowering women soon we should talk about the empowering man the women have gone to sky high the first role model is nobody other than this uh, professional uh, mc person comparing person i do not know whether one can guess whether she is a professional comparing person or a, a technological person biomedical person so like that there are some uh, role models where uh, as per our previous speaker told will power is the best so especially in the engineering women power empowerment she told about the microwave engineering the first lady professor of india is rajeshwari chatterjee one should see her uh, bio data and then people can come out up to her level uh, if they follow her path the second one is uh, i did not tell about kalpana chawla sunita williams and uh, if you go to the space technology uh, gslv 8 all three project directors are uh, women pk anuradha ck anuradha and pramoda the recent chandrayaan 2 that project director also mrs uh, gupta then there's another uh, agni putri she is uh, tesi thomas she was a project director for uh, many agni then radar image satellite uh, project director dr valarmati the moment resat was launched most of the newspaper flashed she made india proud so like that uh, there are many people no need to say about my senior dr kiran deli the first police official of uh, india then about the medical muthalakshmi reddy and uh, late batma bhushan dr v shanta whom i i call living uh, lived mother teresa because uh, she has done lot to cure the cancer patient so we when we keep talking about women empowerment people are going sky high women are going sky high and uh, they even excel men and soon we should talk about uh, men empowerment so these are the few things i want to share with the opportunity given by the inspiring director i keep telling always inspiring director because one should see here is bio data which runs into pages and i normally attend most of the seminars convened by professor madam shanas of 50% to hear all the uh, wonderful talks of the world other 50% to know how beautifully she is uh, bridging the gap thanks a lot thank you so much sir thank you so much sir for your presence motivation encouragement guidance and uh, cooperation and always you motivate uh, not only to me to uh, um, to the, all the participants to this particular webinar on different different topics thank you so much sir for attending the with us and being with us on this particular occasion so we have uh, with us uh, professor ch piradar also our former techup coordinator of uh, pda college uh, uh, kalaburgi uh, can i request uh, biradar sir uh, professor biradar sir can you share your views ma'am uh, first of all i uh, congratulate the spi uttar pradesh i congratulate very inspiring the director vk tagi sir and yourself sir sir ayu ma'am for conducting such a 
uh, wonderful uh, webinar that two on an women's empowerment. Really, it's a very beautiful topic. So I don't have uh, any much to talk because already many of the uh, eminent persons have already spoke to, and there is uh, nothing to tell much about that. But even then, uh, I speak a little few words. That is, uh, as a year, uh, one of a uh, person, the uh, eminent person, he was uh, talking about uh, the role models of uh, 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 women like uh, Kalpana Ch uh, Chawla and others. And at this moment, Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, so with this few words, I thank the director and the organizing committee and the SPIU Uttar Pradesh for giving me an opportunity to spare a few words and to talk a few words with you all. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your sir presence, uh, guidance, and uh, motivation, encouragement. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you so much, sir, for your valuable time. Uh, let me just check uh, if I request audience if they have certain questions, some questions related to this particular theme, they can paste in the chat box or they can ask. They can unmute themselves and they can ask. Uh, questions related to uh, related to, uh, questions to any of the speaker. Or, uh, sir, if uh, there are no questions, shall we end the session by proposing the vote of thanks, sir? Director, sir? Yes, yes, madam. Yes, sir. Uh, can I have your concluding remarks, sir? Uh, frankly speaking, uh, it, it was a great platform today. That uh, Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So uh, at this time uh, uh, for this uh, webinar, which we concluded, uh, Women Empowerment, we invited experts from the different segment and they have thrown light uh, and their views uh, to deliberate upon the ways and means for the empowerment of the women with respect to their security, with respect to their safety, with respect to their self-dignity uh, self and whatnot. So uh, I'm confident that the participants uh, who have uh, joined through this uh, virtual platform will be benefited with this and they will uh, make it a point in their life that they will uh, be responsible for making awareness in the society to respect the women, to work for the safety of the women, to work for the security of the women and to let live the women with self-dignity. With all these words, uh, um, uh, I, I request the uh, coordinator to propose vote of thanks. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much, sir. Mahila Sashakti Karan ka nara hai samaj ko tarakki ke mark par lana hai. Sthri ka darja sabse bada, iska tiyag hai sabse bada. Kabhi maa, to kabhi bahan ban kar dularti hai. Mahila na jane kitne jeevan sawarti hai. Mahila ok ki shakti ko kam mat samjho, in ki shakti ko vahem mat samjho. Kalpana chawla ban kar wah antariksh maap chuki hai. Mahila aaj ke wakt mein har badha paar chuki hai. I take this privilege to close this particular Mission Shakti 2020 webinar, national webinar series. And I wholeheartedly express my gratitude to the expert, our experts today, uh, uh, Dr. Sukanya Ray from TISS Mumbai, Advocate Aisha Sayyad from Mumbai, uh, Professor V.K. Tagi, Honorable Director BIT Jhasi, Ms. Farhana Haq from Bruni, Dr. Eman A. Alam from Egypt, uh, Dr. Rashmi Tagi, First Lady of the Institute from JP University, Guna, and uh, Professor Raghwan, uh, Professor S. Raghwan from NIT, uh, 
Dr. Professor C.H. Biradar from PDA College of uh, Engineering, Kalaburagi. I am thankful and grateful to Professor V.K. Tyagi, Honorable Director, BIT Jasi, for his constant support, motivation, guidance, the way he works beyond ours, and Dr. Anil Kumar, State Project Administrator, State Project Implementation Unit, Uttar Pradesh, for his continuous cooperation and guidance throughout this webinar series. I must express my gratitude to Dr. Mahavir Singh Naruka, Nodal Officer Academic, SPI Uttar Pradesh, for his constant support. I am thankful to all the members of SPIU team, all the members of my organizing team, including Dr. Atul Kumar Dwivedi also, and their participants across the country from various states of our country. I must thank Almighty for smoothing my way by removing the hurdles whatsoever in my path and making the task successful and giving me the strength and courage during this tough time of Ramzan. I am thankful and grateful to all the experts in previous webinar, eminent guests for their valuable guidance and time. I am thankful and grateful to all those who have directly or indirectly cooperated to this webinar. I hope this webinar series would have sufficed the objective of Mission Shakti 2020, the mission of Honorable Chief Minister Sri Yogi Adityanath. Hope to be connected with you in future. Thank you very much. I have shared the feedback link in chat box and I request the participants to fill the feedback so that we can improve in further sessions. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, direct director, sir. I request participants to please fill the feedback form. I'll be there uh, for two, three minutes on board, and then I'll be ending the session. Thank you so much, sir. <coughs> Sorry. Neelam, madam, also could not join, sir. Ha, Neelam, join ni kar paayi. Uh, I tried to contact her, but uh, her uh, it was saying that it's out of coverage area. Sangar sahab bhi nijayin kar paaye na? Yeah, yes. Aaj baut case aaye na, jahan se mein? Hmm. One thousand plus. Aam mere se baat kar rahi thi, Shanaal ji. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Neelam, madam. Ne uh, sir, we have one uh, uh, senior madam, Neelam Dhamija, madam. I could uh, uh, get interacted with her uh, during this platform only. Yes, madam, please. Neelam Dhamija, madam. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, madam. I retired from the Chief Justice of India, Mr. Mahajan K. Nam Se College, at Chandigarh, Mr. Mahajan, Mr. College for Women. I taught there for mm -hmm. 30 years, around mm -hmm. 30 years, I retired, and now I am working as a counselor in Chandigarh schools with permission okay, from the right. Department of Department, Chandigarh, uh, Department of Education. Okay, so this is so my what are basic, basic, yeah. basic area? It's counseling? Counseling is whatever problem comes in the field of in the, in the in psychology for school children. So though I was teaching okay. English, but that uh, thing is that I was interested in uh, counseling children. So in college also, I used okay. to teach my students. They are also started. Now these days I am attending workshops uh, on counseling, on psychology and all that to learn more things for children. That's what I have been doing these days. Very busy. Every day I am busy with one or two webinars. <laughs> That's okay. why I had to leave for some time. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you for joining this particular session in spite of your busy schedule. And I have shared my contact number in chat box, madam. You can share some of the details and we can have interaction in like, you know, um, uh, future. It, uh, it is really nice to interact with you, madam. Same here. I'm very happy. Lucky thank to you. Thank you, madam. Yes. Like you and your webinar it was very nice today. Very good. Yes. No, I could not hear because I had to some, uh, we can say, Shok Sabha, they say, Kate Hana, condolences to somebody. So there yes, I had to go, and one class was there, but just I marked my 
attendance and I asked that I am going. Yeah. Thank you so much, madam. So, thank you. I should thank you rather. You have given such a nice program. And God bless you. Thank and you. Thank you, madam. Continue with this. You are, you are also teaching, I think. Yes, madam. I am in Electronics and Communication Engineering Department, Associate Professor. Very good. Yeah. Oh, my colleagues, we thought by that time I got the title. That time we have a title. I read it, na? My colleagues. Yes, 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 madam. Sorry, we are. Professor, I was the assistant. I could put chess with the professor. Yes, yes, madam. Okay. Bye. Nice talking yes, to you. Yes, so yes, nice yes, talking. Madam. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Uh, Director sir, shall we end the meeting, sir? Ah, uh, sure, sure, madam. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Once again, thank you, sir. Once again, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and bye. Yes. Yes. Thank you, madam. Bye. Okay. Bye.